Hi folks, I'm going to show you how to make knitting patterns in Excel. It's much faster and easier than using graph paper. These steps are for the intermediate to advanced knitter with basic computer and keyboard proficiencies. I'm going to be showing you this on a MacBook Air with Excel version 16.54, although no Excel experience is necessary. Alright, so first thing we need to do is open up a blank workbook in Excel. And the first thing that we need to do after that is um, we need to make all of our cells perfect squares so that we have a perfect grid. And so what we need to do is click on the right of column A and drag it until we get 20 pixels. Perfect. And then we're going to click on the bottom of row 1 and drag until it equals 20 pixels. Perfect. And then while a one cell is selected, we're going to go to Format, Row Height, and see that it's 20. And then Format, Column Width, and see that it's 2.5. So then what we need to do is select the entire worksheet by clicking the Select All button. And once the whole worksheet is selected, we can go to Format, Row Height, and adjust them all to 20. And then the same thing while it's all selected, Format, column width and adjust it all to 2.5. And now we have a perfect grid and we're ready to start creating our pattern. When I knit hats, I use a lot of text and so I always have an alphabet library ready for me to pop in letters into my pattern. So we're going to start by making an alphabet library. You're going to click and drag your mouse to select multiple cells. Um, I like to make my letters seven stitches tall. And then you're going to hold the command button or the control button if you're using a Windows. Um, and then select the remainder cells. That's how, this is how you, by holding the command button, that's how you select multiple cells at once. So when all the cell selections are highlighted, you will then go to your fill tool and fill in with whatever color that you like. A very cool thing that you can do is actually match the color to your yarn perfectly by having two windows open side by side where you can see um, the image of your yarn by doing a Google image search of the yarn brand and color. And then you'll have your letter selected again and you'll go to your fill tool again, but instead you'll grab more colors and you'll click this eyedropper tool and just select anywhere in the picture that you think that it best represents the color. So there we go. Awesome. And we can continue in this manner with the remainder of our letters by clicking and dragging and holding our command button down to make the shapes that we want. And this is, can be however you like it. This is just how I like my letters. Once you have created all of your letters or whatever um, shapes or patterns that you plan to use, you'll want to rename your sheet um, according to what you're working on. I'm naming mine alphabet. And then you're going to create a new sheet for your pattern. We're going to do the same thing we did before to create a perfect grid. And then once we have a grid, we can start popping in the letters that we did before by selecting, dragging, and then copying and pasting into the new sheet. And this is a huge time saver compared to actually doing this manually on graph paper. Once you have your letters or your shapes into your pattern, you can start filling in the colors, um, matching them with the eyedropper tool that we used before. I've already done this for my three yarns. And we're just clicking and dragging, selecting our cells, and then popping in the color with the fill tool. So, oh, oops. And then, if you're like me, you need to have grids in order to actually be able to count your stitches. So we're going to select the whole area and then you're going to go to the border tool and click all borders. And there you have it, your first knitting pattern that you've made in Excel. Uh, and you want to we'll probably want to rename the sheet so you can use it again in the future and definitely rename this file um, so that you can add more sheets and add more patterns to it. You can also use symbols or letters to um, in your cells to indicate whether you are casting on or um, binding off. Um, and or if you're using shaping um, but this is a much easier way to make your patterns than using graph paper and i hope that you enjoyed this video thank you